Welcome to another episode of the Zebra Influencer Series. In this episode, you'll be hearing a conversation between me and one of our premier ISV partners, Connect Inc. In the case we have not had the pleasure of meeting, I am Scott Reyes, a senior ISV manager for manufacturing, transportation, and logistics. Now I'm excited to introduce our next guest, the president of an organization whose motto for the last three decades has been making wireless simpler, smarter, faster. She works with her customers to bring a technology-driven service that provides remote visibility to each mobile worker's experience. Automatically capturing and diagnosing any bottlenecks at the edge. She holds a master's from the University of Southern California. So now let's welcome Sherry to the virtual stage. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me. You asked about the origin story of Connect, and that does go back 30 years. In the beginning, when Symbol Technologies and many of these uh, manufacturers of mobile devices and, and mobile computing solutions began to deploy and roll out and scale up their deployments in distribution centers, manufacturing, you know, across industries, uh, our founder was integral to that process because we were able to, to bring scale and stability to that. So in the network, we were able to stabilize and speed the connection. That's how we got the name Connect. Fast forward to the last 10 years, and these trends, you'll agree, have been um, really ubiquitous in the industry, which is migration to cloud, web-based applications from the green screen apps, um, migration to Android, and a lot of network upgrades and changes over the years have led to a need to really understand the mobile user's experience and pinpoint what, why that experience is occurring and tying it to the performance of the overall uh, IT infrastructure as we would call the mobile system. So today what Connect brings to our partners and customers is mobile systems intelligence. And that has a unique focus on uh, capturing a visibility of the mobile user's experience in context of the whole IT infrastructure. So that's where we are today. And we're not sure where we're going, but you can, you can be assured it'll be customer driven and focused on solving uh, the latest mobility problems. Excellent. The audience who's listening in is focused on the automotive industry. Do you have a specific example around the automotive industry and how your solution is working in it? Sure, Scott. Let's zero in on the factory floor. In any part of the process, there's going to be parts going from one place to another, one process to another, and then even into distribution and out onto a truck. Now, the Mobile computing solution is typically used throughout that process before and after it comes out of each individual uh, manufacturing process to go to the next. Imagine now the users uh, who are scanning to move the parts to the next process are delayed by disconnects, latencies, um, blank screens. They're suffering. Their workflow is now interrupted and therefore the whole production is now interrupted. So the, that part is, is trying to go to the stage two or three and it's held up, which means the people in stage three and four are also held up waiting for that. The implications of mobile user interruptions are far reaching throughout the manufacturing and distribution process, especially those that are not properly captured and identified or tied to an impact to productivity. So in our case, because we are monitoring that mobile user's experience in real time, we can automatically detect when there's a delay or a disconnect and alert the teams to not only the fact that the user is suffering, but to what extent and why, what in the infrastructure needs to be looked at to allow that process to move faster, to eliminate those delays. And that's how we would work with the automotive, how we do work with the automotive industry. Excellent, Sherry. One of the challenges that I've heard from the customers, specifically now in 2021, is a shortage of resources, such as IT resources and frontline labor. So how would your solution help 
alleviate some of these challenges in the industry? Yes, Scott, actually it addresses both of those quite directly. Um, let me share an example with you. We have a customer who manufactures tires. From the labor standpoint and operational standpoint, my conversations with the operations leaders would say to me, look, we're curing tires. There's very little time to delay and our users are constantly telling us or at times tell us that they lose their connectivity, they can't get into the application. This stops the entire process, but it has another implication for the labor side. Typically what companies will do when they run into these issues that are systemic is they don't properly characterize them. So they believe they need more labor to throw at the same processes. So you imagine now that you have a labor shortage, which we do today, and you struggle with labor retention. When you bring in, you have to bring in just the right amount of labor and you have to make sure that they're able to do their job properly and be compensated for that. So if they're struggling to, uh, and they're frustrated and there's jobs available in other industries or in other factories, you run the risk of not retaining that labor, which drives up costs for training, et cetera, et cetera. So in my conversations with my customers who, gener who manufacture tires, I get that from the operation side. They describe that to me. And then the IT director who's on the call with us will say, and it's most frustrating to us because we can't help you. They call from Virginia, a manufacturing site in Virginia. They call corporate IT and they say, hey, um, we're, we're struggling with some connectivity defects. Uh, these users can't work as fast as they used to. It's impacting production. Do those people want to help in IT? Absolutely. But what they're forced to do without this kind of visibility that we provide is that they must now go through a very lengthy and no value process, sucking up IT resources to, for example, fly down to Virginia to recreate the problem, to try to just figure out what's going on, is it connectivity because of the actual local RF network? Is it an access point problem? Is it something on the client? Is it something in the backend application that is causing this delay and it's actually far reaching throughout the manufacturing process? The IT directors tell me we love this because we can now give our uh, counterparts on the operations side, the answers they're looking for. Instead of saying, I don't know, and pulling in all the vendors, escalating it to corporate IT, they now have the capability to um, provide that operations lead with, with answers that allow them to better communicate with labor and solve problems that will move productivity along faster. Excellent, Sherry. Well, thank you for that. It sounds like you're providing visibility to the transactions that are happening down to the mobile user. Now, can you help me understand or help the audience understand what visibility is being provided uh, specifically to the IT resource team or how they're doing better root cause analysis because of your solution? Yes, thanks, Scott, for that opportunity. I'd like to use an analogy here because we're probably all familiar with a phone call. Um, and voice is easy to imagine if there's any problems, the other side sounds garbled. Similarly, in a data transaction, as it were, typically between a mobile computer and a backend application, say, managing inventory, what you'll find is that that data, just like your voice, has to go through the wire, through the wireless, and then into the, in this case, into the backend application to process that request that came from the, uh, the user and then return an answer and goes through that same path, if you will. So what we're doing is we're a participant in that conversation, uh, although silent. Uh, you may remember when you were in high school and we had the landlines and you're talking to your girlfriend um, you know, Friday night and, and your mom's upstairs or your little sister picks up the phone and is listening to that conversation. In a sense, in an analogy, that's the transactional analysis we're able to do. We can participate in that conversation 
that transaction to very quickly, we automate, that's sort of our secret sauce, right? We're automating, parsing and analyzing all the data bits or conversations that are going back. And then we're um, parsing it for timing and connection stability. How that relates to root cause analysis. The big problem when voices are garbled or data isn't getting through and, and the user may experience a uh, blank screen or a session draw is that somewhere in that conversational path, the data is either disconnected or slowed by one of the processes on the back end and the wired side, wireless side. So because we are instantly aware of that, we have no pro further processing. We're automatically determining that the root cause, whether it's on the back end application, wired, wireless, or device or device software, is immediately obvious to us. And that is what mobile systems intelligence can return back to our uh, customers' IT department to make the next step towards resolution. So that's the piece where I'm saying we're cutting out all of that analysis that typically could take weeks to months, depending on what the problem uh, turns out to be. Well, it sounds like you're providing visibility to the operations team. You're doing root cause analysis on the transaction down uh, and helping the IT team with that root cause analysis. Help me understand a little bit about what's happening to the mobile user. What's their interface look like, or how do they interact with your solution on a mobile on a zero mobile device? Yes, great question, Scott. They shouldn't notice we're there, but there's one key piece that we do serve up to them. Uh, it's it's not a piece of software they have to download. We're actually providing that to them, almost like a, a web applet to the device, so they're able to create. In the setup on the Zebra device, and this is part of our great collaboration with Zebra, is they can set up something of a hot button, we call it. And what that will do is, despite the connection to the host, they still have a connection to uh, our software. And what they're able to do is pull up what we call a user report or kind of a complaint form, if you will. And it's customizable. And so the user might pull that up after experiencing some disconnects or some latencies, some slowness, sluggishness in the system, press a button and check box, slow and submit. And that's it. And so their job is done and that sets up off uh, the automated process that I just described previously of root cause analysis by transactional visibility. Excellent, Sherry. So it sounds like the user can report an issue via hot button. It ties back to that automatic root cause analysis that mobile systems intelligence is doing. Uh, so tying this back to the automotive industry and one of the challenges that they're seeing today in the supply chain, can you help me understand how the solution is helping move things along faster or differently in the supply chain? Sure, Scott. Yeah, let's zoom out a second, right? So um, we have a picture of what the mobile user is experiencing as you've described. Now imagine, as I'm understanding from our customers and partners, um, things like aftermarket parts. Uh, the used car business, because of chip shortages and other reasons, we have a, a huge, what we would call demand for parts uh, and chips and all kinds of things, right? So when that shipment comes in and the trucks are waiting, right, to send it off to the customer, can you imagine the disruption and sort of pain to the business if the parts come in and to receive them into the system, they, these users are experiencing these delays and because they didn't have the always on visibility that mobile systems intelligence provides, they may not have recognized this was something that was happening to users. You know, a lot of research, Scott, has shown that if one user complains, that means there's another nine users that are experiencing the same problem. So having this kind of visibility um, really is significant for being prepared for demand. So when those parts come in and they want to receive them 
quickly, get them into the system, and then send them off onto a truck that's going to our automotive manufacturers customers. That having this level of visibility, being proactive about the issues that the users may be experiencing and addressing those and not dressing them in a crisis, or if there happens to be a crisis at that moment, having the exact information to know which vendor or which group within the IT department to get to mean time to resolution much faster. So it's a small part of all the moving pieces that are going on in the automotive supply chain, but it's very critical. Um, it's, a, it's a conversation between the critical apps of the uh, business like WMS and manufacturing applications and the people who are on the ground actually making the business happen. Frontline workers moving one product, bringing it into the door and pushing it out on the truck to the next uh, phase. Excellent, Sherry. And well, as you mentioned, it's a critical process. And well, we hope that every frontline worker is using a Zebra mobile computer uh, while they're um, performing their critical function out at our automotive uh, customers. Um, I guess one of the things that come to mind now is, does your application actually sit on the device? Or you know, how does that actually work? Yeah, Scott, it is not on the device, is the simple answer. It is in the network. It's a virtualized appliance. So it's a piece of software that actually sits similar to a network proxy. Uh, in the customer's environment. So how we work so well with Zebra is because Zebra has on its devices some uh, diagnostic tools, specifically RX Logger and some others. And they're diagnosing and focusing very well on how that device and its battery and the software on the device and the CPU is performing. So when Mobile systems intelligence puts the problem that the users have, it detect, automatically detects, it determines that this problem is on the client side, meaning something on the device or on the local network. We're able to quickly synchronize those diagnostic tools to tie what Zebra has logged as the device performance and the performance of the device with the local radio networks, and then combine that with our big picture so that we can we can understand specifically at the moment that user had a problem, this is what was happening on the device. And we found things like uh, communication that was going on in the background that would, would jam up the radio. We found um, configuration issues with the software, like a browser running on the device that would cause extreme latency. So all of these things are very difficult to pinpoint unless you have all those pieces of the puzzle. So yes, it's very it's a, a really great collaboration between MSI and Zebra. So you just brought up diagnostics tools on the Zebra devices, such as RX Logger, uh, and and other diagnostics tools that are being used in the market today to identify or pinpoint specific issues. Can you explain the difference between MSI and some of these diagnostic tools? Yeah, I'd be happy to. That's that's a really good question. It all sounds the same when you say it. We're diagnosing, we're capturing issues. The, the key differentiator is a couple things. One, most of the tools that are out there are what I would call biased, and that's not an insult. It's just to say that if I'm an application performance monitor, often referred to as an APM, I have a particular point of view from the application. This limits the ability to understand what's happening in the network and at the, at the point of impact, which is the mobile user. If I have a network monitor, which there are many, and, and we recommend our customers have all of these tools because they're all very important in different ways. If I have a network monitor, I'm able to monitor the specifics of the network, maybe dig into the APs and understand how they're performing individually. And the same thing with the device tools we just referred to on RX Logger. Now, these intrinsically are all very important and specific tools. But to go to each tool and try to find a problem and then relate it to the bigger picture 
is a little bit like if you took your car into the auto mechanics and he took apart your whole car and started looking at each and every part and testing it to try to figure out the problem when really he needs an overall diagnostic of the whole car when it's in action, when it's in motion, when that uh, lilt of the engine occurred and which is the reason you brought it in. So think of us as like a higher level diagnostic that goes 50 miles wide, but it also goes deep. But there will be a time when, like I just described with the RX logger, and we've had this with application teams as well, when we can deliver critical, relevant data analysis about the problem and about the root cause to the application team to either use their tools to further drill down to distinguish between something like a record lock or a server utilization issue uh, and you know the whole broader picture. Because what ends up happening is people send these issues to the wrong team and this drags out the productivity impacts of the, the user's actual issue, which is typically a delay or the need to reboot the whole application and log back in and cause minutes of downtime. Right, and that minutes of downtime can be let's say, considered a bottleneck. Um, let's talk a little bit about the savings that we bring to the customers using your diagnostics tool uh, and removing some of those bottlenecks. To your point, higher level visibility on diagnostics, how does that, how does that resolve the bottlenecks, really? That's the, the question. Yeah, Scott, I think you asked two important questions there. Uh, the first one is how and then how much does that yes. resolve for the company? <laughs> so the the how is that we're, again, cutting out a no value process, which is the problem capture and troubleshooting. These are resources that are always strained in an organization and usually allocated to some other project when these issues pop up for the mobile user. Um, so being able to quickly bottleneck it, or determine the bottleneck, excuse me, and apply a resolution quickly resolves to a uh, cost takeout or savings for the customer in a couple of different ways. Let's think of a user out on a shift and imagine that they do about 100 transactions an hour. Now, if about five of those are delayed, that's a 5% defect, we would call it. So 5% of the time, this user is not getting the response they need and they're slowed down. You can then calculate out what that costs in terms of just the labor alone in the sense of paying this mobile worker to not do their job. And then there's implications on the IT side. What does it cost to escalate and, and, and bring an IT support person into that mix? To give you the answer to the question, even a 5% or less delay amounts to about a $3,000 per year per mobile user extra cost to your business. And that's minimum because what we find when we actually start monitoring these bottlenecks is that there are more than the company had perceived of. But thankfully, they're all solvable once you have the kind of information that we can provide. Great. So now, sitting on the customer side, thinking about uh, the questions that the audience would ask, uh, you know, what would something like this cost me? Yeah, Scott, that's a great question. What you would have to uh, spend to, to, act, to actually receive these savings and ROI is about what it would cost you to buy, uh, you know, each mobile worker a venti Starbucks latte or a Big Mac meal from McDonald's one time per month. So it's a it's a cost that you, that most companies are already using on a per facility level. So if I have a factory and I hold a pizza party once a month for um, you know first shift, that is that is about the equivalent expenditure of um, mobile systems intelligence on a monthly basis. Excellent. I mean, uh, I guess I have to ask the question now on the return on investment. You, you mentioned a Starbucks latte. Uh, a venti latte. And so how many of those would I have to buy to get a return on investment? <laughs> we all know, you know, once a year, almost any distribution operations manager or factory floor manager will tell you that there will be a, a escalation of some point originating from this mobile user experience delays, disconnects, that's disrupting productivity. And it only takes one of those 
to recoup the costs for mobile systems intelligence. And that's really just a minimum because you have to also remind, remember that we're only talking about direct labor and IT costs. This doesn't take into account the missed shipments, the view of um, you know, the company's customers themselves of how quickly they can get information and get uh, consistent deliveries. You know, there's a lot in reputation. There's so many ways to look at this including at the executive level, I may have um, 20 facilities functioning perfectly, but, but who would be able to prove that to them? And then when someone comes to me as an executive and says, hey, um, we would like to improve operations and we'd like to do these things, as an executive, I'm gonna say, show me the data that allows me to make that kind of spending decision. Show me that I have a real problem in, for example, my wireless network, or on the devices or in the back end that I need solving. This provides those executives with on the ground data through the infrastructure and allows them to make data-driven decisions about large investments into their IT infrastructure and their mobile frontline workers. So the ROI is really uh, different and it's also extensive across the organization. Uh, well, Sherry, there's a point you just made here. I can get an RI immediately by using MSI, uh, but what if everything's going really well? Why would I want to keep MSI running? That is a very good question. Um, it's also a bit philosophical, I think. Um, from, from just a general human behavior standpoint, the first thing is, you know, once you have an advanced visibility, so, if I'm in fourth grade and, and I'm struggling to get my math homework done and it turns out that it's because I can't see the chalkboard very well, once I get those glasses, I want to, I'm not going to take them off. I mean, you wear glasses, I have contacts. I mean, you don't, you don't remove a level of visibility that allows you to do things more efficiently and um, make decisions better based on data. But from a more specific case, I would say that the sort of philo philosophical question in a sense is, how do you know everything is going so well? You said everything's going great. And I would ask, well, how do you know? Do you have the data to prove it? And if they don't have um, the ability to say and show data to their executive team to say, our mobile users, 98.7% of the time for all their transactions receive a sub-second response time, then they don't actually know that everything is great. And that is probably the primary reason for having this level of visibility is so that you can make decisions, you can make statements like that. And then you have the tools and visibility to make sure it stays that way and then finally, again, you know, it can be used in many different ways besides just troubleshooting and diagnostics. It's a level of uh, visibility into your business that helps you make decisions and advance your business. And I think we all know that if wireless was perfect, we, you know, we wouldn't have, you know, our phone not connect or, you know, we know wireless isn't perfect and, and it's always can be improved. It'd probably be my last statement, but uh, I'd come back to how do you know? Great. I mean, what you're touching upon is a little bit of the infrastructure piece. Um, the talking a little technical, uh, we, let's say we go ahead and select the solution for MSI. Can you explain a little bit of the infrastructure requirements to get MSI uh, installed? Sure, you bet. Um, the best way to describe it is that it's going to be similar in implementation to a network proxy. So basically what I mean is it's going to go into the customer's environment as a virtualized software. And the devices that are on the, the edge are going to connect through our software, which is going to connect to the backend applications. If I'm reading your customers right, at this exact moment, they're thinking that is a single point of failure. That could be a security risk. And so one of the things we do when we um, talk about deployment and implementation, we have a very rigorous process. Um, and we've developed this because we've been doing this for 30 years. We didn't just put this into production. This has been in 
all industries for three decades. And we have um, about six different methods that customers can use to apply redundancy to the system. Many of them are very easy now because of virtualization, fault tolerance, high availability um, features within the infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, secondly, from the security standpoint, this is 100% secure because it's going to follow whatever security rules the customer's environment follows. It's going to live under the same rules and regulations as anything else in the customer's network. So there's no, um, you know, storing data or pulling data off into another cloud or something. It's it's actually all functioning within the customer's environment. So the process that you asked me about is uh, the customer uh, imports a uh, virtual appliance into their virtual environment, typically on the server side uh, or the application side, but it could be anywhere in the network. And then they apply these best practices I spoke of. They connect the devices. We go through a pre-production test and then we're on and monitoring. And the customer receives a uh, web address within their environment that is a what we call the customer portal. And that's where they get this combination of real-time information about all of their manufacturing sites and distribution sites by location. You could see how every single user is doing. You get um, the real-time stats on performance. You get the diagnostic reports, the analytics, et cetera, et cetera, is available through that portal. So that's a, maybe a good high-level uh, discussion. Can, are there any other questions you would have about that, Scott? Yes, actually, so um, that's a great answer. But let's ask some difficult questions here. Um, the first one would be, how long would it take to do the implementation? So it could take anywhere from a couple days to a few weeks, really dependent upon the customer's IT resources. Um, and yeah, I would say that's about the time frames you, you would typically see. So my follow on question to that is, what's the most difficult part of the implementation? Another big thing in the news is security, IT security. We can't get away from it. Every call we have with our customers and potential customers, it always comes up. Tell us about how you are going to keep us out of the news, essentially, right? Um, and again, that so we we I've explained a little bit about how we do that already, but that is something that we are very focused on as a company. Um, and therefore, like I mentioned, we have been developing ways to keep this secure and redundant and efficient for three decades. So we usually get through that um, efficiently, but it's still a process that the customer will go through. Great, and I think uh, my third question here is, what do we need on the device side? Well, this is a embarrassingly short answer, but maybe a relief to some mm -hmm. of you listeners, nothing. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about which MDMs you guys work with today. Sure. Well, honestly, we're we're agnostic, if you will. Um, but uh, you know, Sodi we've worked with, AirWatch. Um, there's been others that have that you know, just whatever the customer is using is is fine for us because we don't actually have to interact with it, but we provide some instruction for how the customer can utilize their MDM processes to to basically make the deployment much easier and less time consuming. And, and then that really is the purpose of mobile device management, right? So the question that's scratched me in the back of my head now is uh, what scenarios would I bring in MSI to resolve? Yeah, and, and, and that's uh, a very long answer that I'm gonna make extremely brief. <laughs> it is anytime you have a mobile deployment, Right, so it sounds ridiculous. Oh, that's everybody? Well, yeah, it's everybody because the reason you've deployed mobility and you've gone through that investment is to get the speed and reliability of getting data in parts and people from one place to another quickly, right? Um, so it, it's, it's ubiquitously applied. Uh, but there, to your point, Scott, I think what you might be getting at is are there certain conditions that would make this really an imperative? And the imperative is uh, anytime there's something being changed in the in the mobile environment, and what I mean by that is anything in the infrastructure that goes all the way back to your WMS or ERP system or manufacturing process system, all the way down to the device or the device software. So, you know, a, 
classic story is, hey, everything's everything was going great until we dot, 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 you know, <laughs> until we upgraded the um, device software or until we upgraded the application to, you know, 4.26 or whatever the next version was. And then, and, and I'm not referring to our software, I'm referring to an application or maybe a network upgrade is a very common time for things that are peaceful and calm to turn into a massive tornado of users not getting to their applications, problems, problems. Um, and then finally, uh, I would say that, and this is probably obvious and goes without saying, is that if you have a current hot, urgent issue, um, this can, be, like we talked about, the deployment time is, is quite short and can be shortened even further depending on resource availability. If you've got a hot problem where mobile users are struggling, it's been going on for more than a, a couple hours or a couple days, um, it needs to be resolved, we can come in on an emergency basis as well and get your, your uh, productivity back on track, get your mobile users functioning again. So I hope that answers it. It does. Uh, I just have a follow on question to that, which is, should I wait till I have issues to call MSI? Yeah, Scott, that's another philosophical type question, I would say. Um, you know, are you the type of person who waits until you get robbed before you lock your windows? You know, um, and, I, and when I say that, you are you the type of person? I mean, is the is the organization that way, or is the organization looking to be more proactive? Is the organization looking to avert uh, crises and escalations? Are they looking to make sure they can prove? Uh, optimal performance, optimal setup for their environment, and that the mobile users are getting everything they need so that they're not interrupted, they're not frustrated. You know, those are the type of things, that sort of a proactive versus reactive um, approach to, to that. So I, did I answer your question on that one? You, you Feel free to ask me a follow-up. Yep. No, you answered the question great. Thank you, Sherry. Um, is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with? Well, sure. I'd love to thank everyone for their interest. Obviously, um, we got into this point. You've um, listened and heard me out. So thank you. I'm very grateful for that. And uh, secondly, I, I invite you to call me up and we can talk further about it. It doesn't have to be any crisis or anything particular. If you have a couple of questions, I don't care what they are. I'd love to learn about your mobility initiatives and how uh, we can help in any way. Thank you. Sherry, on behalf of Zebra Technologies, thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience. As mentioned earlier, we invite our audience to contact their partners, their Zebra representatives, or as Sherry just said, you can contact her and her team to discuss the solutions we just discussed. I wanna thank you for your time and interest. Remember Zebra and our partner and ISV community are committed to your success.